According to Samantha Hellers, 17, mother, she was the spark that made a boring life turn to fun. She was the type of person people craved to have around them because of the humor she brought with her. She was a real comedian, her friend, Binna, explained with a smile while talking about her. Sam truly enjoyed socializing with new people and was able to quickly form connections, but her mother wishes one connection never developed. She was a young, impressionable 15-year-old when she met an older boy named Benjamin Klinger. She really admired him and wanted her friends to accept her choice for love. Therefore, she made multiple attempts to introduce him to her circle, but her friends described him as having a very dark, distant personality. Other red flags became obvious when Sam lost her once humorous and social spark. Benjamin became mentally abusive as he constantly threw the most hurtful and horrible words her way. Nonetheless, his constant apologies never failed to draw her back into his web of control. Sam began arguing with her mother over the time she spent with Benjamin resulting in her being kicked out of her family home. Sam immediately retreated into his care but what first started out as mean words, eventually resulted in physical injuries. As she continued living with Benjamin, her mother learned he ran over her foot and sent her to the hospital. The injury motivated Sam to move away from Benjamin and into her aunt's home, but his desire to have a tight hold on Sam often left him waiting outside her new home. Eventually, Sam regained a good relationship with her mother and moved back home. There, she confided in her mother that Benjamin took sexual pictures of her without her consent and sent them to his friends. Her mother rushed to press criminal charges against him and it was planned for him to register as a pedophile. But once again, he wiggled his way back into her life and tried to guilt Sam into dropping the charges. She agreed to his begging and signed a formal piece of paper to confirm she wanted to drop the charges. The constant on-again-off-again -again relationship was frustrating for Sam's friends and family but their frustration eventually turned to devastation on December 4, 2012. A few days prior, Sam changed her mind about dropping the charges against her abuser. She arrived at the police station stating she wanted him to be held accountable for his actions through other ways than jail. In a handwritten letter, she outlined the requirements she wanted from Benjamin. No jail, anger management courses, substance abuse therapy, and regular therapy. While at the station, she also presented questions about Planned Parenthood because she believed she was pregnant with his child. That day of the incident, December 4, 2012, she texted her mother that she was staying over at a friend's house. Instead, she was actually spending time with Benjamin to discuss her pregnancy, restitution for the criminal charges, and possibly a genuine apology. The two climbed into his vehicle and began cruising around town while talking. Instead of settling anything, a heated argument ensued causing Benjamin to increase his speeds to over 120 miles per hour on the highway. Sam's last text message to her mother was, I love you mama. Suddenly, Benjamin slammed into the guardrail and wrecked while other drivers witnessed the mangled vehicle crumble into a horrifying sight. A good Samaritan called 911 to report the car accident was now forming into a fire. They explained the passenger in the crash experienced the most damage and force all while Sam's screams were heard in the background. The 911 dispatcher directed the Good Samaritan to leave the car crash victims untouched until medical personnel arrived, so they avoided further injuries. However, Benjamin was busy causing his own harm to the situation. A few seconds later, the person on the phone said, the girl screamed, but she stopped. Due to the absolute panic within the moment, the witness on the 911 call never explained the importance of Sam and Benjamin's body positions and more importantly, never mentioned watching him position himself on the other side of the vehicle and sit on her head to smother her. Nevertheless, another person who pulled over to help heard Sam screaming for Benjamin to get off while flailing her legs. When police spoke to a slightly injured Benjamin, he told them that he had no recollection of how the crash occurred yet also insisted he was ejected through the passenger side of the vehicle and coincidentally landed on top of Sam's head. In his words, the car crash was a full accident that was never supposed to unfold. Benjamin told a nurse at the hospital, I feel guilty. I told her she could lay down in the back seat without a seat belt on and she was pregnant with my child. And now she is dead. Investigators were suspicious about the intent behind the crash for a multitude of reasons. Witnesses reported not seeing any brake lights before the car slammed into the guardrail. The tracks in the grass also supported the assumption Benjamin drove his vehicle directly into the direction of the guardrail on purpose. 
Furthermore, he had visible seat belt marks from being strapped in, but the actual belt itself wasn't ripped or damaged to align with his story about being ejected. In order to end up on Sam, Detectives confirmed Benjamin had to unbuckle his seatbelt and walk around the vehicle. If investigators had any slight doubt about their evidence before, they were sure of a murder charge after her autopsy results. An official cause of death was recognized as multiple traumatic injuries and asphyxiation. Her manner of death was ruled a homicide. The motive for the crime has been deemed a concoction of tumultuous issues. The unwanted pregnancy placed a lot of stress on Benjamin because he didn't want to be a father. Court documents eventually determined that Sam was never pregnant with Benjamin's child, but he didn't know that. He also had pending criminal charges against him at the hands of Sam. In addition to these motives, detectives learned he had a new love interest and felt like Sam may get in the middle of his new relationship. Benjamin Klinger took a plea deal for third-degree murder in exchange to avoid a detailed trial. He is now serving a 28- to 56-year prison term for purposely crashing his car to kill his girlfriend along with ensuring she was dead by suffocating her.